Dream Vacations. This week, I'm coming to you from Greece on board the Azamara journey. It is a beautiful, premium, luxury, small ship experience, country club casual. The thing about Azamara is it's a very port intensive cruise line. So you will be stopping at more ports and for longer durations than most other cruise lines. Follow along and I'll give you a little taste on this special test cruise that they're doing to get ready for revenue sailings to start again very shortly. First leg to Newark on United Airlines, leaving Austin nonstop to Newark. My favorite place at the airport. Gotta get some Salt Lake. The low carb brisket and sausage. <laughs> It's not very crowded today. Once again, okay. So there are no power ports on this flight. Um, I think if you had a Comfort Plus seat or higher, you might have them, but you don't have them back in economy main cabin. I got a little ride here to the international terminal. It is really crowded here in New York. You can see behind me. Okay, so I need to take the air train to Terminal B. I had to actually exit uh, the terminal and go over to the air train area to get to the um, Terminal B, which is the international terminal. When you get off of the air train, you come down a level. There's some places to eat Starbucks and you just go up this escalator to get to Emirates. Emirates doesn't start checking in their midnight flight until 8 p.m. So I'm a little early. You can get a Starbucks and there's the Smash Burger and a few other places to eat here. We're here for check-in. So I always do carry-ons between my little stops in the international flights. Um, I always use carry-ons. I hate checking my bags and this makes it very easy. So I'm here at 8 o'clock for the midnight flight and there is really hardly anybody here this early so no lines i'm second in line it's a perfect time to do your check-in so make sure you get here in plenty of time so they wanted to see my passport and my plf pdf document so make sure you have that for athens that is the document that you get before you board um, to show them that you've been vaccinated so that is instead of showing them the vaccination card, you have your PLF uh, QR code. Anyway, I am going to the B gates and I'm gonna try to find a lounge for a few hours. So you have to go through security to be able to go to the B gates after you check in at Emirates. And then um, this area of the gates doesn't have a whole lot. There's a bar, there are some snack foods, but my lounge is over at the other area of um, of this terminal so you'd have to go out of security again through security for the other gates and then do the same thing coming back and i don't want to deal with that so i found a power outlet here in the bar and that is how i'm going to do my work for the next few hours i'll set up to do my work here at newark international airport it is about 8 pm and i am going to be boarding at about 10 uh, or 11 p.m. Uh, for my flight tonight just before midnight and then I'm off to Athens on Emirates Air. Okay, I'm getting so excited about to board a flight to Athens. These are the beautiful first class seats on Emirates Air. Very comfortable and then the business class Also good. Okay, going back further, this is still laid down seats. Okay, so we're on the 11th row now. And then we get to the economy. And this is me. So I have a window seat. Looks like the window seat is blocked underneath. 
I have a pillow. Cup holder. So there's only about 70 passengers in this whole flight today, and it's a huge plane, so I will probably have my own road to myself, which is awesome because it really is very small here in the economy, and it seems like a very old plane. There is something right under my seat, so I have no room to put something under my seat in front of me. Um, I'm kind of disappointed so far. They brought me a blanket too, which is great because I'm freezing. New York Airport was really cold. I love to have my own row and my blankets. <sighs> Hopefully I can sleep tonight. They just brought me some headphones also, so I can listen to the television. These are the headphones they give you. They gave me another goodie bag. See what's inside. They gave me a toothbrush, some toothpaste, some earplugs. I would do not disturb. Wake me up for food. Wake me up for dirty free. I'm not exactly sure how you use this. Oh, I guess you decide which one you want and then you put it on your seat. So, do not disturb or wake me up for food or wake me up for duty free. <laughs> Thank you. More stuff. Uh, that looks like hand sanitizer and a mask. And then also, oh, they gave me a face mask to sleep and socks oh good uh, my feet are freezing perfect i chose that one <laughs> thank you boy welcome back to our college members i'm also my friend having grown board today come for people in countries with big boring languages This is all set up here. I'm very comfy in my Emirates socks. <laughs> it should be a great flight in half hours, but by now it's hopefully I'll get my last video. My goodness, they gave me Amarula. So excited. Look what they gave me. Amarula. Okay, so they're serving dinner. Um, it's we left at about midnight, so it's uh, it's not long after that. They give you chicken or vegetarian options here in economy. Uh, the Amarula was free, also complimentary. They have wine also and other spirits. Um, the business and the first class meals looked absolutely amazing and delicious. You cannot just buy a business or first class meal though. You have to upgrade for the entire class. Stars on the ceiling for me to look at. It's breakfast time on Emirates. Uh, I'm having the frittata. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, it's really bright. <laughs> um, yogurt and fruit and some coffee. So to get through passport control, you needed to show the PDF of your PLF form your and your vaccination card. If you do not have your vaccination, they pull you out of line. I'm not sure what they do with you. Okay, now I've got to try to find a taxi to take me to Piraeus Court. 
because I didn't set up a transfer ahead of time. I usually do, um, but I was running late with all of my Alaska stuff and didn't do it. <laughs> so I'll, I'll go find the taxis. Oh, I also want to get some euros. So I'm going to look for an ATM and get some euros first. I'm going to stop here and do an exchange here instead of trying to find an ATM. So my $300, I use my visa, and it gets me 220 euros. 100, 220, 230. If you have a transfer, look for your name on the signs as you exit. I do not, so I'm looking for taxis. Taxi. Okay, taxis are right here. Easy peasy. Oh, except the long line. Okay, so this is really easy. As soon as you walk out, there is this taxi line and lots of taxis waiting. The weather feels great. It feels really warm and nice, temperate. Um, I'm not at all chilly. I'm wearing long sleeves, um, but it's warm. It's like, it feels like it's in the 80s. So it turns out it's 70 degrees, <laughs> but it feels great. There's a Acropolis. Oh, it's way up on the mountain there. I don't think I can see very well, but we'll see it on our way back. So I cut this super close um, and I would not recommend to my clients that you do this. <laughs> I am a crazy traveler and I travel everything last minute. So, uh, and I also didn't set up my own transfer, which was really a huge mistake. So um, if you don't set up a transfer, make sure that you have your cruise documents that has your address that you're going to, or if you're going to a hotel, have the address. Um, you may not be able to communicate well um, because they don't necessarily speak English. So have an address written down to show people. And um, there is traffic here. So while I thought it was going to be like a 30 to 45 minute drive, it's probably going to take more because it's traffic and it's uh, rush hour. So um, I'm stressing, <laughs> but all is good. We're going to make it. <laughs> yes. And Yes, I have an excellent driver, and he's going to get me there on time. <laughs> My excellent driver. <laughs> and he just showed me Acropolis, too. We made it to the port. Yay. So we're going to eat at gate E11, which is cruise terminal A. And it's right there. Let me see that beautiful ship. Where are you? Is that it? I think that's it. Oh, that's it. Azamar Journey. That's my home. Let me see. Okay, you first you can drop off your luggage here and then you have to go get your test. Next up, you need to give them your Trust One QR code and your passport. Okay, so what do I need to do? Uh, give to the nurse for the test okay. and keep it for the results. Okay? Oh, Thank okay. You. Okay, so now they have to do the test before I can get on. That's it. Thank you very Easy much. Easy peasy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we wait here 15 minutes for our result. So my results are going to come as D14. Numbers come up on the screen, then you check in with them and you can walk on the pathway over to the ship. <laughs> Are you vlogging? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Mm, can't do it that way. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Getting closer. Hi. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Oops. Thank you. You took temperatures, checked your vaccination record, and uh, your check in, and oh, we go this way. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Erica. How are you? Good. And then these guys ask for your passport again and boarding pass, and then it's time to go through security. Okay, through security, and then we are done. Water finally. <laughs> Hi. Do you need the boarding pass or no? Oh, okay. Thank you. 
there's a dog just hanging out here. <laughs> Sweetie, hi. There's Azamara. This is the Azamara journey. Hmm, that looks like a really steep ramp. Hi. I needed help. <laughs> okay, and then another check in. I sent them to, to help you. Yes, thank you. I'm going to give you the, your emergency instructions. May I? In your card, your card will be ready in your room. You see that you have a letter A or B. In case of an emergency, the ship whistle will sound seven and, and one long blast, okay? If you hear that emergency signal, go to your emergency station. Okay. Welcome on board. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I think that was okay. fast. <laughs> I'm forward. I'm on deck eight. This has a real hotel-y feel to it. Well, I'm here on the Azamara journey. I made it to Athens and I'm on this beautiful, luxurious ship. It's like being on a boutique hotel on the water. Uh, it's beautiful and I'm taking a little tour so I can show you all about it. Here, right next to the elevator. So the keys are in the envelope waiting for me. Okay, this is my stateroom 8008 on the Azamara journey. It's a beautiful room that looks um, kind of hotel-like. I love that they give me a magnifying mirror. I need that. And a great shower for me. I'm here all by myself this time, so this is going to be the perfect size for me. And oh, they give me my absolute favorite thing, plush robes, love it. And slippers, of course. Lots of hangers for me. I'll be able to completely unpack. Some extra blankets, laundry, and drawers. Mm -hmm. Bar. That's where the safe is. And then this one is the fridge, which has a few goodies in it. And thank you very much, Azamara, for the bag. This bed looks super comfortable. I can't wait to get in it. I'm so tired. <laughs> And more goodies. They gave me a face mask, which is great. Here's some plugs and information about my shore excursions with the tickets. Bedside tables on both sides. And they gave me a balcony, which makes me extremely happy. <laughs> I love sitting out on the balcony with my coffee, so this is a great table. I can even work out here. I can't wait to, uh, <laughs> to be out to see. They put the luggage protector out so you can unpack right away and then put your suitcase under the bed. So I'm gonna do that right now. Thermostat if you want it cooler or warmer. So I walked up one to nine because that's where the uh, sail away party is. I gotta try to find it. Got it smoking. This is Dancing later, I guess not yet. Beautiful night. Some great options for sitting down under the shade. 
where Windows Cafe is. This is a buffet option at Windows Cafe. And I wanted to look at the sunset veranda. Oops, sorry. This is the sunset bar. These are all the ferries that take you across to the other islands. Beautiful. Okay, then this side has the patio, which isn't open yet. We're back at the pool. This is what I was looking for, the sanctum. This is my favorite area, spa. So it looks like, oh, hello. Hi. I just wanted to take some movies. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Massage room. Uh, the steam room. Ah, okay. So we provide you with robes, towels, and slippers right here. Okay. And this is the steam room right here. Mm. And we do have showers. Okay, great. And, just and then the one you're looking for is right here. Ah. Thank you. This is my favorite area. <laughs> yeah, it's the most private area on the ship. Mm. And this one is what we call Pelasso Pool. Yes. It's like a French word for salt water. Oh, it's but, salt water. Yes, but it's been mineralized. It's very therapeutic. And it's good for uh, if you have any attacks. Mm. for healing as well. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, right no, no, here. the bridge is right underneath this floor. So what is this? Uh, this is... Um, Obser uh, is there an observation deck? Is that... No, it's... Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> it's a bar. A bar. Right there, yeah. Oh, okay. So we are all the way forward here. Yeah, this is the forward area. So if, if you have access to here, it will be like driving your own ship. <laughs> because you will see what the captain can see as well. All right. All right, and what is the cost of the pass? It's $99 per, per person, but if there's two, uh, you will buy couples, it's 160 So, I'm sorry, I'm just one. What was it? 19? 99 Oh, 99 Yes. Okay. 99 for one. For the whole trip. For the whole trip, and then 160 for couples. Okay, so these, these are the lounges, right? So they don't have the heated lounges that some uh, spas have. Okay, mm -hmm. and then they have salon yeah, services. Salon. Yeah. Oh, something already getting. So it. this is our salon. We have Maya technician on board. Mm. Um, she is from South Africa. Okay. So should we have a fire nice mannequin pedicure? Mm. And then this is uh, Rick from the Philippines, <laughs> the only one as well. <laughs> Her hairdresser on board. So we're okay. Really good. And they get the hello. Hello. <laughs> they get <laughs> easily. So okay. I all um. It's good if you want to have you want you have your hair done before um, going to your evening dinner something like this. Um, okay. It's better to book early so you can get the time you wanted. Okay. Yeah, incorporate with your schedule. Yes. Um, so you don't have to you know get in a hurry or be late. They only sell 10 of the spa passes, so I'm going to get one right now before anybody else grabs them. <laughs> they give me a star so they know I'm special. Oh, okay. Oh, that's okay. If you would like, we offer different classes. That's okay. I'm not a class person. <laughs> I'm not a fitness person at all. It's just for my video. So where should we take from? I Oh, okay, so this looks like, hello, hey, we're sitting in Tapas. I'm just getting some videos. Ooh, those look good. <laughs> nice. So do you guys have music here at night? Yes. What time does that start? <laughs> Today everything gets, uh, yeah, I know. Living room. Tonight we have only the DJ. Uh, okay. Because it's the. Oh, 
8 30. 8 30. Oh, okay. Awesome. This is going to be my place, I think. <laughs> Thank you. This is beautiful out here. So, this is what I was looking at above the spa. I'm, I need a drink, but I'm not ready to get one yet. Okay, then on the other side of the pool, right, is the specialty restaurants. Ooh, the sunset. This is the Prime Sea. tonight. This is Aqualina. And another deck up. We have more places to lounge. Apple board of course. <laughs> Ten decks. I've been to nine and ten, and now I'm going to five. I got in on um, three, and then four. Cabaret lounge is in the front, but there's a rehearsal in progress, so I can't go in there. And this one is the photo shop. It's quiet in here. And if you want to book uh, your next cruise, you come here to do that. Just make sure that you want me to be your travel agent on it. This is called The Den. So there's spirits, shore excursions, Photoshop, and cruise again and loyalty on this deck. And there will be a jewelry store here opening in the shop. Maybe I'll show you just a moment. And there's the mosaic. The mosaic cafe. Hmm. Is this specialty coffees? It is. Yay. Is that on our um on the beverage package? No. This is a complimentary. Oh, it's complimentary. Coffee, yeah, like uh, cappuccino, uh, cappuccino, latte, americano. Oh, okay. Espresso, yeah. And what uh, you have pastries here usually, or? Yes, at night like this in the evening we have uh, tapas here, ah. some assorted, you know, mm. or little snacks, you know. Nice. It's in the normally they put in the back of yes. the program. Yeah. Okay. Some pastry will come in. So if I want a coffee drink, like an Irish coffee or something like that. That, that one will be extra charge. We have uh, the charge is seven ninety five. Uh, yeah. But it's in, on one of the beverage? Bever yes. Uh, okay. Yes. So it's on one of these beverage plants. Yes. So you can do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's Irish. You have quite a few different ones. Yay. Okay. Yes. Good. I'll be back. <laughs> Thank you. Are you uh, allowed to get room service uh, from any restaurant? Or yes. So this is Discovery's restaurant. Well, this looks very comfortable. Hi. Is this the main dining? Yes, no, that's our Discovery restaurant. So it's not one of the specialty dining? No. Yeah. Okay. Hi. So I, I'm not assigned a time, right? We just come whenever. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. See you okay. I think I'm coming back for dinner. This has um, pork steamed dumplings and escargot. 
Yum. These are some pastries. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Guest relations. Here is my Aspen coffee. Yes. Delicious looking. I am enjoying my Azamar Club cruise. We haven't even gone anywhere yet. Tonight. Okay, thanks very much. Okay, this is the main dining area. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. Starters, the appetizers that you can choose, and for the main course, you can have the shake and salt. And on the right side of our menu, we have the classic favorites that you can uh, you can have it every day. Every day. And under that, we have the root cuisine, the taste of the port outside. Like uh, for tonight, we have the grits. Yes. Yeah, so you can have the taste, the feel like the taste of the food from Greece, and every day we change it. Okay. Tomorrow is different. And on the other restaurant where they're doing the Greek menu, is it the and same? The cafe also. Uh, there's a taste of Greece. Is it the same menu upstairs? It's different. It's different. different. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting some Riesling. Uh, uh, Rose, Prince Marie, and Christine. Thank you. <laughs> Water, hummus, and pesto. Oh, great. Thank you. Dumplings. I know that this is not a Greek dish, but I loved seeing the dumplings on the menu tonight and I had to have them. Uh, no, thank you. Thank you. This is my seafood dinner. That is a Greek dish. That looks absolutely amazing. This is my Greek dessert for the night. Very interesting. It's like an almond cake with pistachios. It kind of, I guess it's like a baklava. This is actually super delicious. I thought it was going to be crunchy and hard like baklava, but it's very soft. See how soft that is? It has a delicious taste. It's like honey and um, pistachios and nuts. <laughs> I'm not going to eat this in front of you. It is really yummy though. I didn't get to see the sail away because I was eating, but that was a delicious dinner to start with. The cake was so delicious. I love getting turned down service. They do that while you're at dinner. And they brought me an extension cord for my CPAP, which is nice, and the insider for tomorrow so I can plan all of my tomorrow activities. I'm loving my balcony. Thank you, Rich. <laughs> so I am out here on my balcony enjoying uh, the beautiful warm breeze in Athens. It's about uh, 70 degrees right now, but coming from Alaska, this is super warm. It feels great. And I'm enjoying my coffee out here on my balcony. A bird is just flying right by. level of information they give you on each port. They tell you the arrival time, how to get to the gangway location, what you need to carry off, whether the mask is required, um, 
and when the all aboard is. So this is great information, really helpful to plan your day. Tomorrow in Patmos, I am going to do an excursion that I normally wouldn't be interested in doing um, because I'm not here with my family. So um, this is a very famous island for Christians. There's a lot of Christian hi history here. And um, I'm interested in it as a Jewish person based mostly on the art and the history. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the art there. Um, and I will see if it's something the rest of my family will enjoy doing when we do our own Greek voyage together next summer. So you can see the kind of events that are happening here during the day. So room service is offered here also if you don't want to go to one of the restaurants. Um, one of the nice things that they do is this afternoon tea service. You can have it delivered to your room if you'd like. You just tell them when you'd like it. And you can also do a breakfast in your room, which it, I really love breakfast in your room, especially on port days when you want it, you need to get up at a certain time. So um, you can get any of these options. Oops, I don't know what that is. <laughs> What is that? Is that my phone? I think it's my phone. Okay, that was my phone. <laughs> anyway, um, these are the options that you can get in room service breakfast. Oops, sorry. And it's served from 6.30 to 10. You just have to tell them when. You pre-order the night before, no later than 1 a.m. Stores have all opened. So to get the ultimate beverage package, I ordered it over the phone and you have to get a sticker to put on your um, card so they know that you have the package. So this is... Well, I don't think that tells me. Oh, that's the ultimate package right there. That way I can get my coffee drinks every day and be very happy. <laughs> so it's written here if it is a ultimate package or no. It's written you can see U for ultimate. Oh, okay. P for premium. But if you in uh, sign up for U, you can also have the P. Also. So I can have user P's. Yes. Okay. Awesome. The camera is she did, she did, she did the dances. Oh, everyone for the captain's show today. Right, I found my place, everybody. Oh no, this is the cabaret line. Good pandemic. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and welcome aboard the beautiful, brand new, awesome hour of Journey, our new look. What do you think of our beautiful theater? We are so excited to have you here with us. Tonight is going to be a great evening in introductions. Would you like to hear who you're sailing with? Yeah. This is pretty interesting, folks, because I don't think it will ever happen again, because the average age on board is 45 years of age. <laughs> But, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to tell you that number one and in the lead with 84 on board, the United States of America! Uh, then we have number two with 58 on board, Great Britain! And uh, after that, 17 from the Netherlands! And then we have 13 for Romania. so far, it's not fantastic. We've got 12 from Greece! Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful to have the Greeks on board, they invented everything. 11 from Norway! Yeah. They're still at the bar. 7 from Italy! Oh, that's the captain's family. <laughs> They're upstairs, yeah. 6 from Belgium! Yeah. They're still at the Norwegians, okay? And 6 from Canada! 
Yes, they actually let them on board, that's lovely. And then it just plummets from there. I have to tell you, we have 26 different countries from there represented what? here on board for a total yeah. number of guests of 294 guests on our test yeah. cruise. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Family here, I'm just going to explain this little piece of paper that magically appears in your stateroom each and every night. Uh, and this is called the Insider. We've taken great lengths to provide you with all the necessary information that you need, <laughs> including where you're going, in case you don't know what you've signed up for, but who cares at this point? We're on a cruise, right? We'll just go wherever you want. But it is. It has all the uh, morning, afternoon, and evenings events that are going on, activity-wise, entertainment-wise, food and beverage, all listed there for you on the back page. Times of arrivals and departures on the first page. Do take a look. A lot of great information. It's all there for you. You'll find your way around it. So the late night party is happening in the living room. Not too much excitement yet. <laughs> so I'm having this banana split drink. It's really interesting.
from the Azamara journey in the Greek islands. This is my first morning waking up to this amazing view here in Greece. It's so peaceful and gorgeous. Um, I couldn't sleep very well because of the time difference. It's about six in the morning, but this is worth getting up for. I'm loving my Azamara robe. It's perfect. It's very cushy and comfy. Morning from Patmos. It is an amazingly beautiful morning here in the Greek islands. It's a perfect day to start my vacation here on the Asmara journey. Today we're at Patmos. This is an island that has lots of Christian history. It attracts visitors from all over the world who uh, are fascinated by its history. There's also great art and great beaches. So I am really looking forward to my day at Patmos. Um, here, it's, it's an unusual island to stop at, so we're very lucky that it's on our itinerary. And I'm going to visit the monastery, which should have some amazing artwork. I'm really excited to show you this is one of the most authentic Greek experiences that you can have here in the islands. So I'm excited. God, it's gorgeous out here today. Oh my God, it's beautiful. soon since I'm going. Looks like we're docking at Patmos. Oh my god. <laughs> so beautiful. get a quick breakfast at Windows Cafe. So we have made to order waffles also. Yes sir. I like yours and waffles. This is this oatmeal? This oatmeal, yes. Oh thank you. Hello. Good morning. This looks delicious. Leek and Gruyere quiche. And this is Omelette Station. Hello. And some English breakfast. Mash. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> and some deli. Breads, bagels, morning, juice, croissants, fresh fruit, cheese. Hello, good, how are you? And yogurt. 
delicious and cereal. Get your coffee. There is a short excursions desk here. If you haven't booked your excursions and you want to do something, just come on over here and they will help you out. The short excursions are meeting in the cabaret lounge. So you show which tour it is and they give you an assigned. Is this my bus? Yes. Yeah, I'm bus one. Bus number one. Okay, so they need um, us to bring the passport and vaccination cards with us. So I need to go back to my cabin and go grab that. So I leave the please make up my room when I leave for the day. And the other side is do not disturb. Check if everybody has a photocopy of your ID or passport and vaccination. Yep. Super. Yeah, okay. Please follow me. Deck so, three. three. Get a water as you leave. Hello, good day, everyone. Hello, thank you. Love you too. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I was like, hey. <laughs> Have a good day, thank you. Good morning, oh. hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good day. Thank, you. thank you. Okay, our bus is right here waiting for us. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful here. <laughs> hello, good thank night. you. Ticket. There you go. Thank you. So at the very beginning of the tour, I would like to give you a warm welcome in Greek. Okay. And you know, because this is not a school bus, okay. it's not necessary to repeat after me. <laughs> you know, just to listen to some Greek words, you know, the proper ones, at this time of the day. Kalimera sas, kiries kekiri. The English equivalent, good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. We both welcome you on Patmos, a small, a volcanic island, which is characterized as the Jerusalem of the Aegean Sea. Ladies and gentlemen, this particular tour consists of many parts. First highlight is among the trees of one forest, a forest that consists of pine trees, eucalyptus trees, and cypress trees. In the middle of this forest, there is a natural and volcanic opening of the earth, a cave. Part of the Christian world believes that in this cave, one biblical text was received inside. It's a biblical text of the New Testament, actually, which is characterized here in Greece at least as the best seller of the whole Bible, <laughs> the book of the Revelation. So one of the highlights for this morning is going to be the cave of the Revelation. The second highlight is a Greek Orthodox monastery. It's a monastery which is dedicated to John the Apostle, the theologian and the evangelist who belong to the inner circle of the disciples of Jesus from Nazareth and who is believed to be the author of the book of Revelation, a monastery which is 933 years old of continuous and spiritual life. And this is going to be our second highlight, the monastery of John. Finally, we'll come back at the harbor area, the busiest, biggest in size and also population settlement, which is called Scala, and which is going to be our final destination. Inside the cave of the Revelation, inside the monastery of John, photography is not allowed. If you want to take a picture of one monk of the monastery, because it's an active society, it's an active community, I recommend that you should ask for the permission first of the monk that visiting monasteries in Greece, visiting religious places also in Greece, requires a certain dressing code, mainly covered knees. Get some snacks here when you come back. 
We have to take a little walk up the hill and back down. This is a great little restaurant. If I don't like the monastery, maybe I'll be back here. <laughs> so cute. Look at this. Awesome. This is steep. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Cute. People couldn't do this. Whoa! <laughs> I twist my ankle. <laughs> I was videotaping that whole time. So good morning again. This is the monastery of John. The twelve monks here practice monasticism. You know the word monastery, or even the word monasticism. These words derive from the Greek vocabulary, from a Greek tiny word which happens to be a Greek adjective, a descriptive word. This tiny word happens to be the word monos. Monos means single, alone. For instance, you are visiting a country, the 98% of the population at this moment practice the faith of the Eastern interpretation of Christianity. The educated Christologist knew that about the arrival of John at the end of the first century. So the arrival of John was the motive for the educated Christologos to start thinking, building the monastery of John. His initial thought was to build the monastery about the cave of the Revelation. If you remember, I told you to remember that the cave is very close to the port. In the 11th century, there were many pirates around. So the location of the cave in the 11th century was not safe at all. That's why Christodulus tried to find a safer place to build the monastery. And that's why he chose the hill, to be far away from the port. And that's why he made it as a sort of a castle, to protect himself against the pirates. Of course, he had another motive, I believe, because on top of the hill, here we are, there was a temple of Artemis, the goddess of hunting. So it was a very special hill for the island, for the island. He found a place, but still Christodulus had another problem. Because as a monk, no property, no money. Mm. So in order to find a solution, financial solution, he made a trip. He went to the capital of the Byzantine Empire in the 11th century, Constantinople, Istanbul nowadays. And you know, he went straight to the palace. In the palace, there was one emperor, Alexios Komnenos I. Behind the emperor was a very religious woman, the mother of the emperor, Anna. And because women are very... <laughs> so the ground is very uneven and it's steep to try to get up here. For people who have mobility issues, this would be a difficult trek. This is the view from St. John's Monastery down to the port where you can see the beautiful Asmar journey waiting for us. Here, I heard a thunk thunk. But you are hearing it. All the monks are sleeping right now, so we can't see them. Thank you. Thank you. I have no space for this. You can't smell it, but it is very potent. This is a religious bracelet. Mm -hmm. It's like mine. Mm -hmm. It's the same. It's made here. Just for your information. St. John dictating the gospel of the cave. Mm -hmm. The vision of St. John. Uh, this is St. John. All the others, it's copied from the museum icons. Okay, thank you very much. What's it? So the walk to and from is very steep and rocky. Um, you're not going to be able to do this if you have mobility issues. 
of things to buy on your way to and from. Hello. <laughs> Restaurant, cafe, that you can stop in on the way back down to the bus if you like. You can see how rocky and steep this roadway is. Lots of places to stop on the way back down. I have and a tendency to take. A nice little cafe too. <laughs> <laughs> That's Actually, we're just outside the cave of the Revelation. So the strong belief among the churches is that the author received these visions, but he also wrote them down in this volcanic opening of the earth we're going to visit in a few moments. The Grotto of the Apocalypse, as the cave of the Revelation is characterized. The author narrates in his own book his arrival on Patmos, but he also explains why he came on Patmos. I, need, I think that we need this biblical quotation to confirm. He says, I, John, was on the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus. This is the biblical quotation. A quotation which claims <laughs> that the son of Zebedee and Salome was exiled on Patmos. We know by whom? By the Roman emperor Titus Flavius Domitian. So we know the time. We believe that he stepped on the island 95 years after the birth of Jesus Christ, that means in 95 Anno Domini, and he was exiled here on Patmos because of the persecutions against the first Christians by the Roman authorities. Inside the cave, what we are going to see, first of all, the pillow of John. What the pillow of John is? A hole inside the rock. There is a very old tradition on Patmos, which was kept very vivid by generation to generation, and I have already mentioned to you how important is the tradition in Greece, which claims that whenever John felt tired inside the cave, he used to lie down on the ground, placing his head in this big hole, using it as a sort of a cushion. Inside the cave, you're going to see the support of John, which is another hole. The oral tradition of this island claims that because John was a very old man when he stepped on Patmos, whenever he wanted, as an old man, to help himself lift his old body up, he used to put his hand in that hole, using it as a sort of a handhold. Also, inside the cave you are going to see a flat inclination of the rock, which looks like a bookstand. The strong belief is that this is the natural bookstand where the biblical text was being dictated on. You know, the belief is that John did not write the visions of the book of the Revelation by himself. He couldn't because he was in a spiritual state which is called ecstasy. He dictated the visions, though. He dictated the seven seals, the seven trumpets, the seven vials or bowls to that young disciple who escorted him, his biographer, Prochorus. Finally, on the roof of the cave, you are going to see a large crack you know, a fissure. The strong belief is that the voice of the resurrected Jesus of Nazareth, which sounded John like trumpets or waterfalls, was so powerful that it caused this particular crack on the roof. A crack which actually splits the surface of the rock into three large parts. A number, three. which always implies the very three. fundamental three. symbol of all Christian denominations, the Holy <laughs> Trinity of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So try to remember these key words. The pillow of John, the support of John, the natural bookstand, where the book of Revelation was being dictated on, the large crack on the roof, and the symbol of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And this is the summary of the summary of the summary of the cave. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to take this zigzag path all the way back up. It's beautiful. It's just a kitty sitting out here. Oh. While we wait for the bus. Morning. Morning. Good morning. morning. <laughs> Let's see what drinks they have here. <laughs> In that case, the seawater of Patmos, I mean. 
I would use three adjectives. That it is very deep, that it is very clean, that it is very refreshing the whole year. I mean cold, the port of Athens, which is around 300 kilometers. The duration of your trip is eight hours. Another option is to catch the flight from Athens to the nearby islands that have got an airport. Actually, Patmos does not have an airport. In case of an emergency, though, a helicopter has always the opportunity to come because there is a small heliport on the island. So the nearby islands that have got an airport are Samos Island, and Samos is the island of Pythagoras, the philosopher of the 6th century BC, whose philosophy was based on numbers and also music. Kos Island, the famous island of Hippocrates, the father of the medicine, 5th century BC. These two islands have got international airports. And taste, please, from pastry shops or bakery shops, the famous local cheese pie. The famous local cheese pie is called local cheese pie. It doesn't have a certain name. It's actually round pastry with two different types of cheese plus eggs. Try to find a taste from pastry shops or bakery shops a famous local sweet which is called pungi. Pungi is actually pastry stuffed with honey, rose water, and nuts. Of course, it's redundant to tell you that on the left is your cruise ship, it's very obvious. To the right is the center of the center of the center of the port to wander about, to go for shopping. The place where the baptistry is, is the closest to the port beach. You can swim there also, if you like. So you just walk over here and there's lots of shops and cafes. Good Wi-Fi. There's a taxi station right outside the ship. So if you just want to take a taxi somewhere, easy. So a bus station. Pet bus. Okay, I think I found the entrance. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to show your card to get back on. Oops. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, I have to use my sanctum pass. So I don't need the lockers. I'm just going to go out to the terrace. All alone out here. One of these. Well, <laughs> I'm in the hot tub I paid for, but I can't figure out how to turn the bubbles on. I might have to go back inside. This is very comfortable, the little metal lounge thing. It's a, it's a good, Temperature for the heat too. Okay, she says I have to push the button all the way at the back. Very, very difficult. All right, that works. All right. It's not as easy to stay in as the one in Holland because it keeps making me float. Oh, it's because this one's salt water. I forgot. So I'll be floating in this, I think. See? Ah! Okay, I decided to try out here, see if I like this better. Well, these have seats, so it's easier. 
you're not uh, lying down and it's I don't know if it's salt water but it's more comfortable and I'm not alone there are people out here which is nice Yeah. That is a Bailey's mudslide. It's supposed to be there is a chocolate syrup, <laughs> but uh, for now, <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> there is a chocolate here. Okay, Windows Cafe. They have some lunch stuff, burgers and sausages, hot dogs, and spicy tuna. I'm gonna go into Windows Cafe. Ice cream. <laughs> oh, gelato. Mm, yum, yum. <laughs> look at all this. I look at this before the lunch. <laughs> take a nap because I'm so tired. That lunch was amazing. The seared tuna. Oh my god, it tasted so good. Delicious. All right, I have to go to sleep. I'll talk to you when I wake up. Lovely. 
Chocolate, yummy. Yeah, I love turn down service. I wish I had this at my house. Tonight, um, we got the insider information about our date in her Aquilon Crete, which we get to tomorrow. And also disembarkation information for Athens. We I booked a tour um, and airport transfer, the Athens sightseeing. So tomorrow in her Aquilon, um, we get our special bright night celebration which is an all-white celebration so we're white it, I'm in group A so I depart uh, at 8 p.m. it looks like or maybe at 9 15 I have to read this more carefully <laughs> I've been dancing all night and drinking a little bit sign around the world sounds real interesting beautiful morning in Greece and look at all of these cruise ships here in Crete we are approaching Heraklion So Heraklion is a university town. It is usually hopping for uh, nightlife, kind of excitement, um, good restaurants. And it's known for the Palace of Gnosis, which is right outside of town, and that's where I'm going today, as well as seeing um, a tour of the city. The other area in Crete that people like to go to is on the other end of the island. It's about a three hour drive. You can get there by bus or um, ferry.
breakfast at Windows Cafe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's it? That's all. Hi. So today they have lids and they have uh, croissant sandwiches. Oh, and they have Prince Benedict. Oh, no, too much to choose from. Ate too much today. I'm getting my bagel too. So much to choose from. It's a smoothie bar too, so you can get a smoothie. Okay, I have my usual table here out in front at the Windows Cafe so I can see the view. but it works here so um, it is a little strenuous walking though so, so you should have good walking shoes um, but it's good to dress in layers it's going to get warmer later in the day so um, i'm prepared to take off my outer layer it should be beautiful If you have an excursion again, you come to the Cabaret Lounge or wherever they tell you to meet and show them your ticket and then you get a bus assignment. Hello. Good morning. Hi. Super. Bus number one. Put it on and take a seat, please. Thank you. Thank you. So you always have to show your key card going in and out. Oh, I always forget. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, woo. It's a beautiful day. Good morning. We're on the tour. Okay. Bye bye. Cool bus. Hello. 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 What? Oh, this looks so cool. cool. What makes it cool exactly? <laughs> Doug is very easily amused. Oh, which one? The small one. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hey, good to see you. Thank you. Oh my goodness. These stairs are too tall for little people. You need bigger legs. Oh, no. oh, it says do not sit here. Do not sit here. Jeez. Wait, where am I allowed to sit? It's every other seat. No. Yeah. This one's a okay. Yeah. 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 So there are restrooms before and after, but not during. So I'll check this out before the tour. Two for you. Thank so you. Do this. Oh, interesting. So you pronounce this kenosis? In Greek, it is knossos. 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 And in English, it's knossos. And what about the city? Is it Heraklion? In Greek, the hero is called Heraklis. So it's Heraklion. But in English, the same hero is called Hercules. And oh. Therefore, Heraklion, the Latin pronunciation. Ah, okay. Thank you. 
The palace is the largest, most complex, and most fancy of all in Greece. It's located about 20 minutes south of Heraklion, and Knossos Palace was inhabited for several thousand years, starting somewhere in the 7th millennium BC. It was abandoned after its destruction in 1375 BC, which also marked the end of the Minoan civilization. This was 1,500 years before Acropolis. Knossos Palace was the ceremonial and political center of the Minoan civilization during the Bronze Age. This building was destroyed by fire. They could carve it very easily. Double headed axe. You can think So the raised rectangular stones are the altars for sacrifice. To do what you want them to do. Mm -hmm. It is 3,500 years old. Huh? 3,500 year old floor. Everything that mankind needs, it was always there since the beginning. Yeah. Knossos was once the city-state of Crete, with the town surrounding the hill the palace is on. The area actually has a very long history of human habitation, from the first Neolithic settlement around 7000 BC until 1500 BC, when the surrounding city had a population of 100,000. The palace suffered through an earthquake, but then was reconstructed. It's believed that the palace was abandoned about 1380 to 1100 BC for largely unknown reasons. The excavation and exploration of the site have provided historians with a wealth of knowledge and insight into Minoan civilization. Tools like clay and stone incised spools and whorls point to a cloth making industry and curvaceous female figurines indicate the worshiping of mother goddesses. The palace structure we see today is not exactly as it looked in its original time. Due to reconstruction and renovation throughout the years, it's considered by some archaeologists as a facsimile. The palace complex is not believed to have just been the residence of the monarch, but also as the civic, religious, and economic center of Knossos. The Knossos Palace has been associated with two of the most well-known tales of Greek mythology. One of them is the tale of the labyrinth and the minotaur. According to mythology, Minos was the child of the Phoenician princess of Europe who was kidnapped by Zeus in the form of a bull. He had been given the right to be king and to make all the laws by his divine father whom he consulted every nine years. Zeus was strongly associated with Crete, having been born and raised here and is sometimes believed to have been the first ruler of the island. The Cretans even have his tomb here. It is believed by some that the Palace of Knossos is the same palace that Greek mythology refers to in the Minotaur story. According to legend, Theseus, a prince from Athens whose father was an ancient room. Greek king named Aegeus, whom the Greek sea is named after, sailed to Crete, where he was forced to fight a terrible creature called Minotaur. The Minotaur was a half man, half bull, and was kept in the labyrinth, a maze by King Minos, the ruler of Crete, who lived in his palace at Knossos. It was said that the Minotaur was the king's son. The king's daughter, Ariadne, however, fell in love with Theseus when he entered the labyrinth to fight the Minotaur. Ariadne gave him a ball of thread, which he unwound, so that he could find his way back by following it. Theseus killed the Minotaur, and then he and Ariadne fled from Crete, escaping her angry father. It's really empty here today. Just so you know, during the summer, this um, can have a line that would be 20 to 25 minutes long. So it kind of pays to go off season sometimes. So the Minoans were first before the Greeks. So I already am too hot and I had to take off my top layer. So make sure you're wearing layers. Where we stood a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we, if we had the chance to visit all these palaces, we would have seen that all of them are, are built around the central court, like 2,000 years later. Wow. In the floor, this hall was connected with sewage, and mm -hmm. it was surrounded with four traces, 
indicating that most probably there stood a wooden seat with a hole in four legs. This is the piping system. Where According to Greek mythology, the, the famous the architect Daedalus designed the palace with such complexity that none of those who entered could find the way out. Daedalus is considered by most the greatest inventor of ancient Greece. He was simultaneously a real craftsman and an artist. For example, our grandparents until the beginning of the 70s. The Palace of Knossos is divided into several sections, each of which has a separate use. It was multi-story, built with carved structures and decorated with magnificent murals depicting possibly religious ceremonies. It was accessible from three entrances located on the north, west, and south sides. Four wings develop around the central courtyard. Steps reached the, north, the central court. We saw the throne room. We saw this... Um, uh, Grand staircases, according to Sir Arthur Evans, talked about Bathroom. the bath and everything, went down the steps all the way up to the north entrance. And this is where we stand right now. The north uh, uh, room with the pillars, the Minons had two systems uh, supporting the roofs. The columns that were wooden and the pillars that were stone ones. Sir Arthur Evans describes these areas, the customs. So I'm having an espresso while I wait for the tour to be over. We're having a tour of the city of Yerkutlia. All berry trees. I love this. All over the country. There is only one town in the southeast, which is here, Yerapetla, that is the southest European town. The three mountain ranges uh, cover the island, and uh, it is 140 miles long and covers an area of 3,400 square miles. They have eucalyptus trees here from Australia. Mm. Delicious. Smells really good too. <laughs> This uh, van is set up to give blood, so sometimes they just set up in front of buildings out here to give blood, which is awesome. There are so many places to eat here. <laughs> Old Venetian port. <laughs> okay, this this is a little scary. I don't know. Like, yeah, I think this is a trap. <laughs> so we are at Keep Cop. Keep Cop. Lugatsa. That's what we're looking for. 
Cheese pot cream with ice cream. Okay, so coffee? No. I the coffee. There's coffees. Something cold would be good. It's so hot today. Soft drinks. Seasonal. Milkshake. <laughs> Drink drinks. Oh, pictures. Pizza. Pizza. Pizza? Yeah. Oh, that's it. Lovely. Oh my goodness. So this is the bugatza with cheese, and that's the bugatza with cream. Thank you. Okay, she did not steer us wrong. Oh my God, bugatza is delicious. Um, here. <laughs> delicious. So good. I usually show you me eating things, but I'm not gonna show you. Amazing it is. So good. Uh, we preferred actually the sweet cream over the salty cheese. <laughs> you have to tell me, where, what's the name of the restaurant? Kirikor, the name is Kirikor, uh, it's Armenian name. It's uh, since, since uh, 1922. Okay, and Very you got the best, what, how do you say the, the thing we ate? This is Bugatta. Bugatta. Yes. The best Bugatta. The best Bugatta with cream, cream or cheese, yes. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you. you. So it is super crowded here today because it's a Saturday and it's gorgeous weather. So all of the town of Urkleon is out to enjoy. Luggage, Whoops. lost, what do I do? Super cute little baby dress. In a port I know, a sightseeing train tour, guys, right at the port of the Venetian port, the famous dolphin statue. <laughs> oh. Yes, it smells like fish here. <laughs> this is great and it smells fishy. Hi. Hi. There's corn everywhere here. God, this is so cute. I love it. People are actually in the water here. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. So this is the Venetian Sea Fortress. Whoops, I dreamt. I have problems out there with that. <laughs> Amazing. So it does cost money to go in. There's tickets. Because it's cool. It is actually really cool in here. I haven't done that. And then this is the other islands of the Greek, Greek Isles, like Santorini and yes. Athens are in here. So where's Athens, Mr. Smarty Pants? <laughs> Over there, and that's Turkey. Oh, there's a map right in front of us. So, yeah. Of course, it's in not English. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is in not English. <laughs> <laughs> Doug is going to be the star of my video this time. So, just a warning there is nothing in English here. So, you have to just look and imagine what you think it all means. This reminds me of um, Pompeii. Like this whole trip has been. Take it back, there's English. English, English. <laughs> there's steep steps up here. Gorgeous today. Yikes, I feel like I'm gonna fall though. And we're kind of stuck behind, but you can see the little Azamara sign. The, 
the Aegean Sea is looking absolutely beautiful, stunning today. It is so warm. In the summer, it gets super hot, just a warning. Way to the ships, but, <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> this says way to the ships, and I can see the ships. We're almost there, I think. I yes. Think, I think these are the line. Oh, wait, well, maybe I don't know. this is the line, maybe. I don't know. You think? <laughs> yeah. I think we do have to go in that line there. <laughs> There's our home sweet home. Okay, so we're almost there. I think we go through this passenger station over to Azamara. There's a taxi stand right here outside the ship too. Passenger entrance through station. Okay, this is the port of Iraklion. Iraklion. <laughs> what? So this yellow line took us, would take us to the city. Oh. See how easy this would have been if we didn't do a tour? Ticket sales for something. The cruise ship. What do you need? I need to see your cards, please. Just card. She just needed our key card, and then we're going to go through security. So the pool is salt water and very comfortable temperature here for Crete. Feels great and uh, so relaxing after a day of excursions when you're sweaty and hot. Oh, so nice to just relax in these great little like, bedside, <laughs> poolside beds. I think I could fall asleep here for all night. Serving fruit kebabs at the poolside. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I loved this so much yesterday, I had to have it again. The seared tuna wrap is amazing. It is so tasty. It's at the patio right next to the pool. You can't eat at the pool. You have to actually eat at one of the tables. Um, although they are serving ice cream today and you can eat the ice cream at the pool. Ew. You said two when I said <laughs> Why did you say two? <laughs> did say two I said water. Hi, we are in Discoveries tonight for our bright night dinner. Ooh, bright night around the journey. It's a special menu tonight, and we're all lovely in white, which I'll show you later. <laughs> That's the bread, and again, hummus. I'm having Chardonnay today from Italy, correct? Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. This is the beautiful salmon appetizer. Delicious. That is my beautiful lobster tail. I'm going to take a picture of yours if that's all right. And this is the uh, strip roast. I, I am. It is. It's gorgeous. Look how beautiful that is. And I'm going to eat at least one bite of it. <laughs> Would you like to have some coffee or tea? Um, I probably should. Bright night party. Yes. Look at that. Yes. And stuff coming. Yeah. Brought me champagne. Thank you. Emily, Grace, Tequila, Luke, and our wonderful dancers, Krista and Tyson. And don't forget to give my stuff to Krista and Tyson. Hey! That's your idea. That's Kevin's party.
party and we've got a day at sea tomorrow thank goodness i need to rest and a wonderful chocolate for my turn down service such a beautiful day today this is a, a day at sea and it is gorgeous weather perfect way to wake up Just to get out windows. Beautiful way to dine al fresco in Windows Cafe. Get your coffees. These are the goodies you can get at the Mosaic Cafe. These are my favorite specialty coffees, but you need to have the ultimate package to be able to order those. Don't <laughs> yeah, you're buying you know, 500, right. 100 in the middle of the uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. on the face of that. And I got a chocolate croissant with my coffee. Give yourself some credit. It's the morning wake up quiz. So your brains won't be quite as active. But after this quiz, you're going to be on it. It's going to be awesome. So my guess is that I got zero out of 20. <laughs> we'll see how I did. <laughs> what top grossing U.S. retail chain owned by one family? And it is Walmart owned oh, by the Walton family. I got one. <laughs> Walmart owned by the Walton family. Question number two, what's the only positioned player allowed to touch the bottom of the pool in water polo? And it is the goalie. I got the there goalie. too! Yeah. <laughs> the goalie. And question number three, what did the French call the English disease and the English call the French disease? And it was syphilis. Uh, syphilis. I was joking. <laughs> And question number 17, what is the main ingredient in Thousand Island dressing? Mayonnaise is what we were looking for, mayonnaise. Can I give myself half because I put both ketchup and mayonnaise? <laughs> sure, I'll accept that. You kind of got it. One, two. And that is all of our questions this morning, ladies and gentlemen. I will give you a second to tally up your points. Oh, total score. Do I have anybody that got more than five? Yes. More than five? Very nice. Anybody that got more than eight? Woohoo! Oh, it? no. More than ten? <gasps> Still more than ten? What? Are we the only team left? How many did yes. you get? Thirteen. Thirteen. Very oh. nice. Congratulations, you guys are going to be our winners this morning. Two prize points for both of you. He's trying to dip you. I there you go. I get a one. Woohoo! <laughs> 
this is our price redemption list. Mm -hmm. This is like our menu. This is the, the prices. Some of these are, it's uh, encouraged to pool your prizes, your prize points, which is absolutely acceptable. So like if you want, you know, a set of coasters for your house, maybe you and whoever you came with, you can pool your resources. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, things like pens and key rings, t-shirts, all that good stuff. They're doing a beginner course on how to use your smartphone for photography. So I was just really curious. Oh, nice. you so I'm in. here to um, to take a look at what tips and tricks we learn. Yeah. First one, three fast ways to open the camera. Okay, phone. Feel free to just not tap anywhere. The phone will focus. Little <laughs> bunnies. Nice. Oh, that's so cute. And we're gonna take the bottom uh, the bottom tip and bring it all the way up to the top. Be completely flush. We want it to be okay. just oh, no. slightly off of each other like two little mountain peaks. Yep, just like that. That's where you're gonna make your first fold up. I'm gonna make another one. Just like that. Tape and flip it on its face. Yes, very good, very good. And we're gonna roll this whole thing up from tip to tip. Paying special attention to this bottom edge here. The cleaner you can make that, the cleaner our flower is gonna look at the end. And once you reach about this point, you'll want to start leaving yourself a little bit of extra slack in your roll. As we can see, we have this ridge. That's what the tip of this is going to tuck into at the very end. So you want to have enough room. Really start peeling them away from each other. You don't want to unravel your whole shape, but the more you can start widening and peeling them apart, and they're going to go ahead and wrap around the base of, uh, of this flower that we're making. So we're moving down and we're opening and we're folding down so that the tips here just sort of drape against the table. <laughs> Mine did not mm -hmm. work quite right. <laughs> I feel like if you open it a little bit more, palm and sort of squash down. So we're making a, a little base. And then, <laughs> you take it, flip it over, and there's ah, your rose. See how pretty? <laughs> There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. You make great ones. How do you do that? Oh, right. yours is pretty. Yeah, because once uh, I was keeping this part tight, but letting the bottom be a little looser. Oh. Uh, so it makes it more ruffled. Fold it down to the bottom edge. And then repeat that move, top to bottom. The top right corner, and fold it down. Other side, and then fold it down. Yeah, just like that. We're gonna put our finger on the bottom left corner, take that bottom right corner, and fold it up. So we've made sort of a, another triangle over on this side. We'll take the same thing on the other side. So now you can see we've made sort of a, a diamond with a space in the middle. So we just fold up just like that. So we've made like a very long triangle on this side. Yeah, exactly that. Keep a finger there to repeat the move on the other side. Now we're going to take all of this, flip it over. We're going to take his little nose and flip it all the way up so that we have one flush line down here at the bottom. Yeah, very good. It's the nose, so mm -hmm. I'm not folding. So you fold him backwards. back on himself, yeah. Okay. And this is where your rubber band comes in. You can take it, put it around the back of his little head and over the little hood of his nose, and that'll help him keep his shape. It. You can open up his ears. He looks kind of like a pig. <laughs> <laughs> With little googly eyes or something you could decorate him for. I you wish she does. You gotta it's figure out a way to. Yeah, I wish there was like, we'll give him a little. Yeah, that's this all right. one's cute. That's all right. All right. Well, thank you guys. Okay, yeah. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Return to service, uh, the major revamping, dry docking that it took place to bring us to this level. Our young lady, she had a major <coughs> multi million dollar facelift. So it's not only the cosmetic, but we did a lot of uh, technical uh, improvements, uh, upgrades, and retrofits. First training again. Not because I was so happy, because I looked at the ship and I said, oh my God. Yes, actually, like Thomas, I shut down the ship back in uh, 
July 2020, and I came back to restart the baby. And when I read the report, I said, oh my gosh, my poor journey. And now, like a miracle, she is even more beautiful than before. Again, a miracle and a lot of work. As you can tell, those are holes. So the windows, the glass was actually falling off. Those were the pillars. So you understand why I was a little bit sad when I came back, right? And this is our, our dog on your left side. You see where the shoes were done, all three of them. Yeah, as you understand, uh, after we suspend operation, the company had to go in energy saving mode. And the only way to keep the ship afloat and keep the company afloat was to cut as much as possible cost. So like Thomas said, there was uh, what we call the mothership. It was the quest feeding the two sleeping beauties, the pursuit and the journey. We were really the one in the worst condition. The pool, this is how the pool looked like when I got on board. We did have uh, contractors uh, in Glasgow. They start working uh, with, on the steel work. Then the crew, basically, they ground up all the old paint. We That was uh, the condition of our portals and windows when uh, I reached uh, Glasgow. Again, they removed all the frames, all the windows. That was uh, an external company. Recalc everything, polish, put new brass frames. So now it's not raining inside. <laughs> and the job was done from inside from by the contractor and outside by our crew and then how it looks now balcony railings oh that was another major job beside uh, the rust the chipping uh, and uh, the recoating this is how it looks now now all the railings we had to crop uh, the supports Brand new steelwork, a lot of uh, sanding and scrubbing and uh, removing the old varnish. Believe me, the two ABs that they work on the handrails, they have nightmares. They spent two months. We have a lot of wooden handrails around the ship. Who are those gorgeous people? <laughs> Um, three white night, no. Oh no. This is hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, there is a selfie scavenger hunt, which I just won on my last cruise last week. Ooh! So, hey. So tell me all about the scavenger hunt. Okay, so our <laughs> selfie scavenger hunt here on the Azamara journey consists of 15 selfies that you have to get. We've got 15 minutes on the clock and you have to get as many as you can in those 15 oh, minutes. Oh, I only have 15 minutes. You've got 15 minutes. Oh my God. Yep, so it's a speed round. Okay. And each selfie is worth a different amount of points. So my hot tip, yes. go for the ones with the higher points first. Okay, so <laughs> let's see. These are four. A let's see, a five. five is a person wearing pink. Oh my God. Oh, five, let's see. I can't read. Um, Selfie with a receipt from an onboard purchase. Uh-oh, I think I threw all of mine away. Oh. Selfie with a member of the entertainment team. Mm. Okay, selfie sitting in the birdcage. Oh, I did that last night. I'm not allowed to do that one. <laughs> um, okay, life jacket, oh yeah, yay. Selfie with someone else taking a selfie. Ah, okay, that's easy, I think, mm -hmm. especially I thought I'm the only one doing this, though. It's not so easy. Let's go. Okay. I, we, we had a couple of latecomers who's actually my sister. Oh. So she's late. So we're going to go ahead. Oh, she's coming. Oh, here yeah. she is. Always <laughs> late. 
That's funny because I saw her last night. I thought she looked a lot like you. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize it was uh, your sister. This is my little sister, sister Harriet. Oh, uh, so cute. Yeah. How did you go? Do we have Harriet in third place. Congratulations. Woohoo! <laughs> See, I don't, I'm not favorite, I'm not playing favorite. You are family. And we have a tie! A tie! And I'm Rich. I'm Lainey. Rich and Lainey, yeah. congratulations. You are Thank both you. the winners. Woohoo! Thank you for playing today. <laughs> great plan to the right. And great plan to the left. Go for points. One, two, three, and shimmy. Oh, okay. And one, two, three, and shimmy. Gorgeous. Oh yeah, uh, oh yeah, uh, oh yeah, uh, oh yeah. I like that. That's actually, that's easier. <laughs> Next move, water pistols from the hips. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just walk over your right shoulder. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. To repeat. Woo! It's fun. I forgot how much this, this class like actually gets me. A little, Are we gonna do it to music? A little work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna do a, a like a slowish one. Okay. And then we're gonna do a, a peppy one. Alrighty. Here we go. Five, six, seven. Try the hot dog today. So we'll see how they do a hot dog. Well, not exactly what I expected. Okay, today in my cabin, I got the instructions uh, for how to get the antigen test to return to the United States. The testing takes place on October 11th, which is tomorrow, um, in the living room between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. And they give you this QR code to use. So it should be really easy. My testing time is 8.30 in the morning and my shore excursion time is 9.15, so that gives me plenty of time 
to test before I have to leave. I also got our disembarkation information. I have signed up for the Athens sightseeing tour with the airport transfer. So they want this returned um, by tonight with my flight details. And I have to bring this up to the shore excursions desk. So I think I will do that right now. Okay, so nobody is here, but here's the drop box. So I'll just drop it off here. We're doing a scenic cruise right by the island of Santa We're not stopping there on this test cruise. Right now we're sailing past Santorini. Back at Discoveries for dinner. I don't know if I've taken a good picture of the way this dining room looks. So in the world, today's world cuisine has China. Oh, Peking duck. Interesting. Okay some lovely water tonight. My video didn't record. Or is that pesto? That must be pesto. That's pesto and hummus. Okay. No, thank you. I got the no, egg chop soup with spinach and edamame. And that that's the is cabbage. the crab panna cotta with caviar. With the Peking duck. And what was that one? Huh? Oh, that's the halibut. What? What is this? That is the pesto. We want to send the theater, especially first time performing in front of a live audience in over a year and a half. So yes, very very exciting, and I'm so glad to be here.
and the wonderful bandmaster, which is Daniel. Look at his hair. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> this one is. information so 
they want us to do a mandatory a PLF form again, even though we filled it out to come to Greece, you have to fill it out again um, using the country of departure Malta for where the ship's registry is and point of entry is at Piraeus port um, and then temporary address, um, our home address, which is interesting. So we have to do that and we have to, um, we got information about our disembarkation and how to handle the luggage. And I'm in the Athens sightseeing and then airport transfer. So meeting time's 845. Uh, so all is uh, interesting. Tomorrow, we're gonna be going to Mykonos. So I'm actually going to Delos to see that island from Mykonos and then I'll send a, spend a little time in Mykonos as well. Um, and we are tendering into Mykonos tomorrow. So we will be trying the, the tenders, which is interesting. Tomorrow's schedule of events. Oh, tonight's the last night or tomorrow's the last night. <laughs> okay, we're in Mykonos. Uh, today we're going to be tendered into port. You need the key card and proof of vaccination. And you're also going to need your antigen test results to be able to go on your excursion this morning. So I am all set to get all of that done. Coffee crumble today too. Okay, I love coming out here to the sunset bar for my breakfast with the view. So I got this banana crumble today and there was a bananas foster uh, dessert last night which I really had wanted to try and I have a feeling this is the leftover and it is delicious. morning from Mykonos. It is a beautiful morning, although it looked like it rained a little bit overnight. Uh, today, I'm going to take a little boat ride to the island of Delos, which is the ancient ruins um, nearby. And then I'm going to try to get to the beach in Mykonos on my own. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, beautiful day today. I am going off to do my antigen test now. Wish me luck. antigen testing there's a little line you don't have to go when your time is on your uh, on your appointment you can come early so you just need the QR code that they gave you and your key card <laughs> thank you and now okay please wait here and as soon as the fountain is up here for your convenience am I saying hi you are. Hi. I'm just showing people what the process is. Okay, please scan your oh. QR code. Thank right you. Here. Did that work? Yes. Oh, okay. 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 So so are you Thank you so much. Have a great day. Yes. And so she's going to give me a vial. Here you go. <laughs> Thank you. And you can proceed over there. Thank you. Thanks. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. It was nice Hi. Hi. Ready? I'm always ready. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> 
They don't go as far up as the U.S. Ah, yes. <laughs> we are more general here. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Will I get my results? By email and to your cabin with a hot coffee. <laughs> Thank you. So we have to have a card to then be allowed off the ship. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good. It's 8008. 8008. When going ashore, please show to our security at the gangway. Okay, great. Day. Thank you. So it looks like they have sausage rolls, quiche frying, beignets, a little ham and cheese croissant, um, some other goodies, coffee, I love it, mosaic cafe. Super foam. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No, I'm good. Thanks. I got it. Okay, so I'm giving my ticket and my COVID test. <laughs> Hello. Hey, are you tour? Yes. Yes. <laughs> You by yourself? Yes. Okay, perfect. Please take a seat. Thank you. I'm three. Um, Asian girls, Gangway is located on deck number three. Okay, please just follow me. Let's have our uh, key card ready to exit, please. And we have water available on, on deck number three. Okay. I have a towel and a water, just in case. Good morning. Yikes. Thank you. Good morning, Captain. So this is how you get on the tenders. Easy peasy. Okay, so these little tenders are pretty easy, but if you have um, mobility issues, there is a little step you have to go over on the ramp. Five thirty is the last tender. I guess we have to get our temps checked. So you can get tickets um, to Delos right here if you didn't do the tour. So the number three tour guide is here waiting for us. There's a little map of Mykonos. If you need it. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so we get a little listening device. It's really small and easy. That's Jackie O's cantina. 30 minutes to the west. Uh, I definitely recommend the bathrooms on the boat because when we get there, it's an archaeological site. It's like an open museum. Mm. So uh, it's, uh, we won't have bathrooms until the end of our, our tour. Uh, that is going to be our boat, the Los Tours. Um, explore the town after too. We're tending right into the town. So this is the old port, this side here. And you have two sides, uh, the old port and the little Venice area, which is nice to see afterwards. Uh, so in case you get confused in town, it is a very nice flat town. Also, there's no need to go up the hills. These are newer parts of town. Uh, if you want to see the windmills and the little Venice, it's one of the most beautiful spots on that side. 
but getting lost in town is part of the experience. <laughs> so don't worry about that. Just remember Old Port, in case you're confused, people will point you back to here. It is a pedestrian town. In the morning there is traffic, they reload the shops. You see there is the fish market, there's the farmer's market. Um, and it is the center of the island. Uh, also where tourism started with Jackie Kennedy, Onassis, all these uh, fashion designers, movie stars of the past. Uh, yes, exactly. You point to the shot. Yeah? So it's, uh, it's pretty much the most protected area on the island. So everything needs a permit from the archaeological community. That's why if you look at pictures from the mid-50s and you look at it now, it still looks the same. Uh, and on Dilos, we'll see why this cycladic architecture is strictly protected here and why it exists with the flat roofs, the white washing. Um, so you'll see that it's been used for thousands of years. Uh, but I'll tell you much more. We can start our walk today. I'm going to go to Elia Beach. How do I get there? You have to take uh, a bus from there uh. or a taxi. The taxi stand, you see where it says Ramenzo? Uh huh. There's silver taxis back there. Okay. So those are two. Two easy ways to get there. Okay. This is our boat upstairs, downstairs is fine today. It's not uh, it's not gonna be windy. Do I need that? Yes, thank you. This is a very beautiful oh. cycladic island. And to our west, this is Rinia, the island of the dead, which I'll tell you a lot more about. Now, um, all the edifice, when you look at it, it has the water line that has went up seven meters from the past. So uh, the eastern harbor is partially underwater. Uh, and Dilos, its highest point is Mount Kinthos, 155 meters high. 
And uh, that's the earliest settlement of humans from the Neolithic period, 3000 BC. But it's very common around all these islands. People ventured out very early on with simple raft-like boats. And they use these islands as stepping stones because it gives you bravery to see where you're going. Uh, that's why the very first sea trade we know of in this part of the world is between the Peloponnese, a natural cave, Frankfi, and Milos. I don't know if you're going to Milos. It's a it's an island with a lot of uh, uh, mining coming down to the south of uh, Greece to the Peloponnese. Uh, they are the ones who developed the Mycenaean civilization. did not benefit them. They returned to their mainland. They are war-oriented group. Uh, they are the ancestors of the Spartans. We thought that in 1100 BC, start to redevelop their economy. He was the youngest of the ancient Greek gods. His um, sun god is not present today. <laughs> is, uh, also, Vilos is one of the brightest spots in Greece with continuous sunlight. So it was no mistake that they chose it for the sun god Apollo. They Grinders that you grind with the barley, those little table stands, those little columns that held up tables. A rim of a, um, a cistern over there, a well of the cistern. A wine press, even a Hermes slab on its side. You see some of the volcanic rock from Santorini as well. And all the way up this avenue, there's also a sewage system that runs up this avenue and connects to many of the houses. And the parallel or the other uh, avenues that cross this one also have this sewage canal uh, which allowed you can see at many points you'll see the hollow part allowed the waste to get to the uh, sea uh, they were very concerned with hygiene in these tightly uh, populated areas so always very separate the canals of the water from the canals of the uh, sewage you see some tables from the past here. And uh, street laws uh, in open systems where you could actually walk down and get your water. They found the uh, inscription saying, if you bathe here, you will be fine. And no animals allowed in these populated areas unless you had the permit you were building. So uh, they just moved move the... So we are now off the main track because the big groups are going to do the main track we'll do. But the majority of what we're looking at is from the 3rd century, the Hellenistic period, 3rd century. But you'll be able to see the plaster from the past, so they put cement around it to try to maintain it. They play <coughs> light, uh, which they found some parts of. You see again the indentations, the sort of like doors that open, so you know we're going into a private area here. Uh, let me show you what's You ask me who was here? We don't know. Come in. And we even have writing of them in the Mercy houses facing the door and the central mosaic midrash. Uh, because uh, that had value, they adorned it for it because it was constructed this way. Uh, it was a very unfair door. The five forts, just like this one was, uh, one of the two largest of the five forts. And wait for the boat to come in. Say a Syrian merchant uh, is uh, waiting for his boat filled with wheat and barley. That's what they export. They check the cargo, make sure the amounts are there. They only unload, that's why all these shoreline is uh, small warehouses, very small warehouses. You can understand that that's how they survived. There's no way they had enough to survive here without this continuous trade. And also that's how they... Uh, and here is the... Oh, beautiful. Mosaic of the flower, nice little uh, uh, wave motif around it. So... Uh, and they forcefully uh, it is the island of death because as the Athenians dominate being the last Ionians left on the mainland they're very proud of this they say we never fled as the rest of you did they do it by force at first but uh, 
After a plague started with the blasphemy to his name. So they demand for the cleansing of women from all the material of the bench. And without the symbolic verb, Merinia become the next one spot. In uh, Mykonos, we call them uh, villas in plural because there's two of them that are so close, they're almost interconnected. But in any case, I see it's rocky here trying to move around. Me here. Oh, sorry. So this was a dyer's workshop. This person used organic dyes, either earth dyes. Uh, different colors, as many have a very coarse piece of the leaf. We we'll pop it now. you turn around here you see structures that remind you of a fortress like this one you see those Doric columns there uh, generally when you see columns making a square uh, this is evidence of a central courtyard so that is a merchant's house it is the exact opposite from what we've been seeing these industries are welcoming the public to come in come in take a look what is being sold This is a Hellenistic mansion. Essence for cooking for ointments, so they had to import a lot of them. Uh, you see the remaining plaster. And let's go in from the side. This is the door they've opened for us. Uh, of course, this is a working uh, typical mansion. Oh, sorry. that's falling on its side on the floor. The vineyard around the animal's neck and his head. He has wings on his back. So that's Dionysus. That's also the patron god of the Mykonians back then. Um, so now, notice that the whole plot of the street is of a whole garden. So this is a massive water collector as well as column three, a uh, private uh, central cistern which has the two wells. This plane is where they uh, dine, and you'll notice this when we go into this compartment, for example. The remaining glass now. So you see how rough the first layer with this graffiti is, with all the ceramic debris, and then layer after layer, they try to make it look uh, like marble slabs. Wow. Uh, so obviously if you place really small statues in the corners of the decoration, and you can clearly see the colorations too, yellow, red, because plaster is porous, it sustains this color is much longer. Color. Uh, if you visit uh, Hellenistic graves in northern Greece, they are underground and you can still see some of this color on the statues. So this was called the Andron, and this is the closest thing to a living room. Uh, this is where the head merchant would invite other head merchants to partake into a symposium throughout the night. So this is This is the sewage system from the bathroom. Now, Cleopatra and Dioscorides. Oh. Dioscorides is the husband to the right, and Cleopatra is to the left. That of the Ptolemies is just a common name. From here, you can see them standing next to each other. Very rare. Uh, the statues of are the people who own the house. Who the owners are? Is the status of the head merchant. So they said as much as they could to have one in a very demanding uh, merchant society. You have two beheaded statues. Unfortunately, most of the statues in the Proto Christian years would either be beheaded. The wife of the car, once again, uh, named after the mosaic. There's the mosaic of the trident, which is the Poseidon's weapon. That they try to make it obvious to your eye that it is a replacement. For example, this is the chest. Show the house of Poseidon. 
but you can get a view of how we would have entered. Lamp for luminescence outside. And what is interesting is this window. You see all these indentations and the side bar, and you can see the metal of these bars. Up here is what I was saying. This is a plaster replacement, so you can see that's not an original part. Mm -hmm. Now inside this compartment, you will be able to see the remains of the plaster, and you'll notice that it doesn't connect to the inside of his house. It has a side door that was closed and guarded, a front door that was It's a bit offset from the central courtyard. The mosaics, unfortunately, in this case, they have been covered to protect them. They're part of his mansion here. Mm -hmm. Here was underground. And uh, you can kind of see where they haven't cut the sink. Is all the rubble is still in here. So, so this is a technique still used in stadiums today. It is a technique the ancient Greeks loved. Social media, newspapers, TVs. Uh, you'll notice it is the nine arches here. These arches are using the keystone technique. They architecturally are there to support a very heavy roof or else floor bed for us. Um, it's covered by a wall, blocking our view. They could not see us. You see it's a classical uh, integrated theater with a semicircle. There's two uh, spots in the first area, the walkway. technique many say but the arch is developed by the romans it's not the arch exists and you see here it's very pretty here this is the theater Calimera is good morning you hear everyone saying it very often yeah. and yato is goodbye but it, it literally means help to you so we say goodbye hello cheers if someone sneezes it's all yeah. so the first row had backs to their seats. So, just like... We had a little space about a meter and a half high here. This is where the access goes out to the main road. Behind you had that wall we are talking about. It's very comfortable. Then you had <laughs> colored. And then they would have to hand to the playwright with his guild of actors to come in and play out their trilogy. And if they uh, won the overall event, on this table, take a look at the little hole on the left to drain the liquid and something we like to eat today fish yes this is a fish monger shop fish was a very important part of their diet you see a very thick first layer ceramic was like plastic back then so they had a, a array of uh, broken oh, material to work with to roughen up the first layer there was a uh, ceramic piping going to the roof indentations to illuminate with oil lamps and where Mr. Cat is there is the lead and copper connectors to the marble which is very red to find mm. metals because scavengers always look for metals immediately to uh, steal since they add value this is how he washed off or she washed off his floor bed this is the taste <laughs> Go up the sacred walkway to the temples and the entire bit here. You notice they're making uh, expensive, very long buildings with very high roofs. They only have one side open. Intimidating walkway tunneling you straight to those four steps that you see. And down again. Uh, the massive uh, uh, capitals of the Doric columns. And uh, of course, there's always the market to help.
So uh, people are walking all the way up to Mount Pintos. This is the, uh, still the real uh, walkway from the ancient period that the pilgrims used to go to the very top where they had a shrine uh, dedicated to Zeus, a shrine dedicated to the goddess Athena. And right where that turn is, where the walkway turns up, there was a shrine to goddess Fortune, made of marble as well. And you see this temple here that stands in such good shape? If you're wondering why, it's because no one went up there to, to steal things, but... Um, Temple-like building with its four steps that would walk through and down the propylia. And there's another hermit slab looking down to it. Uh, it's always capitalized on rock as the Hellenistic period crumbles. Um, the Romans did not... Uh, Hands after 314 BC, and they went as far as making it a fully peripheral uh, uh, temple. So we have uh, House of the Neptune. This is the temple which is said to have been fully made of wood, a uh, 1000 BC. Oh. Had a full marble to it. Um, what are these gates? You see that building there with those four columns? It's a three-level building. It goes inside. size distance of these temples with the last one have probably made all around it and the very first one six tenths of Common treasury established by the Athenians after the last century war in fear of another treasury that they have. Basins that shroud, they disposed of their trust, mm. big, deep basins, going away. So you couldn't just go throw what is the teaching of God into the pot with common trust, that would be black had these sacred basins. Um, so, um, what did they do? They just kind of fortified themselves and stay on the island. So, and I'll show you. Uh, private, let's call it clubhouse, uh, if you're any through the sacred lake now. This is where Artemis and Apollo were supposed to have been born and what makes this a sacred area. Um, there's not much here now, it's wooded. We had such little rain in the winter. Usually we have water all the way up there so you can see how people walk down to get their water. This was fully covered. Being donated and as, as weird as it may seem to us today, they even used
rotunda, you look for the Altamara Club Cruises little tent. And then there's our little tenders ready to go. I'm going to go walk through the city, see if there's something cool to look at first. So there's a handy map. Lots of little street cafes. I'm getting hungry, but I might just go back on the ship. The old port is over that direction. Thanks. <laughs> 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 like they had amazing seafood here. Do a little shopping, go to Aliyah Beach, the old port or the windmills. Um, lots to do other than going to Delos, like I did. But um, I'm heading back on the ship. You can take a ferry over to the old port here too. So they have to <laughs> unload first and then they let us in. Hello. Hey. It's a little rocky going back in. <laughs> Big step, big step, big step. Big step. Thank you. So I think they're doing an afternoon tea in the living room. Or at least they do sandwiches and something up here. Okay, so they have like little sandwiches yeah. and pastries and scones. So is this is this afternoon tea basically? Yeah. Okay. Oh well I have a view of Ponat for my lunch. Yes. Thank you. Beautiful. This is the pork loin sandwich at the patio. So today is my last day of the cruise and I have these little prize winning things but you need like 10 points to win some cool prize. So I am going to do as many things today as possible and try to win my points. So today is Broadway trivia. Hopefully we'll, we'll get something. Identify which Broadway musical it comes from. Uh, and what is on the line today? As always, it is Azamara Prize Points. I believe this is your last chance to earn some Azamara Prize Points. Oh, I have this one, I think. The bottom of midnight has been... Who has this one? Anybody? What is it? Is it Cabaret? It is Cabaret. Very nice. This is the uh, dialogue for the start of My Hair from Cabaret. Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Very good. Mary this one's easy. Yeah, Beyond the Nanny? Yes. Annie. Did you ring the bell for anybody? It is Dream Girl. Dream Girl. Woohoo! Nice. Chorus line. 
It is a chorus line. Very good. It's that late This Mitzvah. is uh, a song called Empty Chairs and Empty Tables from Les Miserables. Oh, I got it! Woo! Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. What of is it? it is. Did we all get Oklahoma? Yes. Oklahoma. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. It is Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Very good. Very good. <laughs> I love it. It is West Side Story. Very good. All right. I did better than I thought I would. <laughs> that is, uh, one, two, three, four, four five, six, seven. I got ten. See, for not. Tender. So you get points for every game you play and every game you win. I have a big five points. <laughs> and then you trade them in for a prize at the end. So um, with five, I can get a key ring or a pen. That is my prize this voyage. It's different points for different voyages. Since this is a short one, they're they're doing things for a little less than usual. Goodies you could get. You have to play every game. Thank you. See you later. Okay, this is my big winner. <laughs>
Ian in the trumpet. Thank you so much. Pablo in the bass. So important. That is my breed. <laughs> Can I get the other? Be my escargot. So we this is the shrimp. And this is the eggplant. Okay. Yes. Smetches. I want creme brulee delivered to my room. I had a. How's everybody tonight? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Eric the Gray, but it is true, ladies and gentlemen, I am the Tommy Tune of Osamara Cruises. That's for all my American friends out there. I'm exactly five foot eighteen. 
and I'm a god to the Filipino crew. <laughs> tomorrow morning and I got my negative COVID test. I got my um, Greek form filled out with the QR code. So now tomorrow I'm going to do a transfer to the airport with the tour of Athens. Well, I'm on my, em I'm on my Emirates flight. It has been really pleasant. It's a 10 hour flight and I've been sleeping the whole time. Um, it's it's um, they're serving their second meal right now. We have about two hours left. And they served a lunch and then a dinner. So no breakfast, which is a little confusing to my body. But it's um, today. I had the road to myself again so I could lie down. Power and to Wi-Fi the whole trip. from the airport. 
I was supposed to get a king, but they ran out tonight, so I told them it was okay to give me a double since I'm all by myself anyway. Nice big bathroom. After a little cruise ship, it's nice. <laughs> then two beds, which I don't need. The bar and restaurant is open till midnight. I am totally not hungry after two meals on Emirates coming over. And you can see we are right at the airport. So they have shuttles that go every 15 minutes, 24 hours a day, and it is hopping here. There's a lot of people downstairs at the bar. I'm just gonna go to sleep. So I just wanted to give you an overview of what happened today because um, Internet was really bad this past week, and my iCloud, which holds all of my photos and videos, uh, wasn't working. So my iPhone just died overnight. Last night, um, I thought I would need to restore it and lose all of my videos, but luckily, as soon as I got back to Wi-Fi, um, it was working again. But that meant I missed taking videos of the entire disembarkation process and my day going from the port of Piraeus to the airport in Athens. Uh, and I did a tour on the way, so I got to see the Acropolis and the Pantheon. So I'll take you through um, a little bit of the day just so you know what the process was. Um, um, we were asked to be off of the ship by 8 a.m. and meet our tour in the terminal area at 7.45 a.m. Uh, we were a little late getting checked into the port, but um, it all worked out. We needed to have a PLF form, which is the Greece entry form, uh, filled out, which we did on the ship to get us out of the ship and into uh, the city of Athens. That's not for the flight. That's only for your return into the port. Um, so because my phone died, I had it all electronic. Luckily, Guest Relations has a way to print. So you can just email your um, forms, whatever you might want in hard copy to the guest relations desk and they'll print for you. They also wanted, of course, the printout of your test results. Uh, COVID test results were, were returned to our rooms. Luckily I was negative. So then once in port, uh, we took a wonderful tour through the city of Athens um, and saw Prius as well. And, um, the Acropolis is amazing, uh, but if you have time, go to the museum. That's where the actual artifacts are. Um, so it is well worth your time to not only go to the Acropolis and the Pantheon in person, but also go to the museum. Um, the city was really pretty in the center, the Plaka area, which is where I usually uh, book all of my clients when they have hotels. There are some really cute ones, nice ones. It's a, a very walkable city uh, in some areas, not everywhere. Um, so you do have to be careful where you are in Athens. Um, and then at the airport, I have a priority pass. So I was able to go to the lounge. Um, Emirates Air was a little frustrating. They didn't want to check people in until three hours before the flight, which meant you have to stay on this side, you know, the uh, not the air side. They have a lot of restaurants that you can eat at, but um, I really wanted to just get in and go to my lounge and I could not do that until three hours before my flight. Then um, it was very easy. The lounge was very nice, free Wi-Fi, of course, and food, uh, snacks and drinks. And then, um, and then I was able to go to the gate uh, um, where it was an easy check-in there. Again, Emirates was a very, very uh, empty flight. I had a road to myself. I had bought a premium economy seat, so I had a little more room, which was nice. And um, I was able to lie down the whole way um, and sleep, which was great. And I also could buy Wi-Fi the whole way um, for $20, which was also great. Um, so Emirates this time was a lot better than my first experience, I thought. 
the the seats were better it was more upgraded as a plane it was still the dreamliner plane um but I mean, I did sleep a long time. They served us lunch and dinner. I really thought it should have been dinner and breakfast, <laughs> but, um, and the food was okay. It was nothing special. They do serve drinks. I had a Bailey's and coffee, um, but I mean, service is great, but I, I wouldn't say that Emirates blew me away as one of the best airlines to fly. It was very comfortable, it was nice, but um, I've had plenty of really fabulous international flights uh, with fabulous food and service. So um, I I think that if you fly their business class and their first class, it's a different thing altogether. But for coach, it's just a normal coach flight. Um, I think that's all I can tell you. So I got in late into Newark, so um, I don't have a flight to Austin. Shuttle back to the airport is pretty fast. Realize that Kansas is actually the oasis of the yeah. I am at my gate here at United and right across from it are these really lovely little tables with uh, ways to buy something to eat. So I'm going to have a little breakfast before getting on board. What an end to a wonderful two weeks of amazing vacations with Alaska and Greece all together. So I am very happy to be on my last leg going home and please follow along for my next trip which is going to be on the Celebrity Cruises Apex through the Caribbean. Can't wait to show you all about it. Follow along. This is what I ordered which is way too much food but it will be fantastic before my flight home. vacation. Follow me on all the social networks. Subscribe to my emails. Like and subscribe. Thank you for following.